Without knowledge, action is useless and knowledge without action is futile. Throughout the movie, we witness Conan's journey from a young boy to a fierce warrior, as he learns important life lessons along the way. From the importance of seeking knowledge and honing one's skills to the value of friendship and the dangers of revenge, there are many valuable insights to be gained from Conan's story. So, join me as we delve deep into the world of Hyboria and uncover the timeless lessons that can be learned from this classic tale of heroism and survival. After losing his parents and being captured, young Conan was sure his life was over, but the gods foretold the lad to wear the crown of Aquilonia. The old blacksmith forges an iron sword, and afterwards he goes with Conan to the mountainside to tell his son about Krom, the great god of their people, and the secret of steel. Life in the village is disrupted by the arrival of an enemy army led by the evil wizard Thulsa Doom. The raiders destroy all the villagers, and right in front of Conan they stab his father with a sword. The guy's mother hides with him in the woods, but Doom's army finds them. The evil sorcerer takes the blacksmith's sword and approaches the woman, hypnotizing her with his gaze, and, ignoring the guy, beheads the woman. Along with the rest of the village children, Conan finds himself enslaved by the villains, and the captives are led through forests and fields to the place where Thulsa Doom intends to build his mystical city. In the center of the settlement, young slaves spin a giant wheel. Conan is strapped to it, and the guy has a long time to spin it. Twenty years pass. Conan is still spinning the wheel, but he is no longer a young guy, but a grown, strong man. One day a change happens in the guy's life, the master takes Conan away from the wheel and takes him to a neighboring town, without explaining anything. There the strong man is thrust into the ring and is pounced upon by an opponent with sharpened teeth, whom the warrior defeats. From that day on, Conan becomes the main mercenary and takes part in every fight, defeating strong and brave opponents. When the guy's victories are no longer counted, he is sent to the east to learn the martial arts from the great masters. In addition, in the east, the warrior is taught to read and write. He is introduced to women and becomes a real man, even though he lives in a cage the whole time. Despite Conan's childhood away from home, he does not forget his father's words and continues to pray to Krom and respect the power of steel. Years later, after earning his master's respect, Conan gains his freedom and gets away from the slave owners. On his way, the lad encounters a pack of wolves, and to escape them, he climbs a rocky mountain. Falling into it, Conan finds himself in an abandoned dark tomb. The warrior makes a fire and looks around. Along the walls he notices skeletons covered with cobwebs, and at the end of the throne room are the remains of the king. Conan notices a sword in the skeleton's hands, and, carefully taking it out, the warrior beats away the rust and dirt, and finally gets his own weapon. The head of the ancient king bows, and the lad sees it as a sign, Krom himself brought him here and gave him the ancient blade. Having got out with the sword, Conan removes the remains of the chain, and, having dealt with the wolves, he goes further. Conan travels many kilometers until he meets the first living person, a beautiful woman waiting for the warrior in the doorway of her hut. She invites the traveler in and rests, telling him that the magical forces warned her long ago of the coming of a mighty man. The witch dances a ritual dance for Conan and tells him of a prophecy by which he will become king and defeat the mystical serpent. To do so, the man must pay a price and lie in bed with her. Conan does not refuse the pleasure, but as soon as the man gets down to business, the beautiful sorceress turns into a terrible witch, and the warrior has to cast her into the fireplace, from where she flies out in a ball of fire and disappears into the woods. Having rested, Conan prepares to go on, but from a mountain gorge he hears someone's pleas for help. The barbarian finds there a beggar prisoner, who has been left to die as a punishment for theft. Subotai, that is the prisoner's name, asks for some food, but Conan decides to take the lad with him, so as not to continue this journey alone. The men get some game and settle down by the fire to get to know each other better. They tell each other about their gods and even argue a little. For the next few days the men run through fields, forests, mountains and rivers and finally they reach an unfamiliar town. Strolling through the marketplace, the travelers look at strange animals and try some foreign food. Having refreshed themselves, they continue their journey without deciding where they are going. In another town Conan gives the blacksmith his sword to be sharpened, the men rest again and find an old man from whom they can learn about the snakes that Conan seeks. The old man says that a year ago it was only a small sect, but now snake statues have appeared in all the towns, and the army of the serpent leader hunts people at night. Conan shows Subotai his strength by knocking down a camel, but this draws too much attention, and the men have to leave town in the middle of the night. On their way out of the city, the men are met by a girl with a sword, Valeria. When she learns that the travelers want to enter the serpent temple, she asks them to take her with them. The company climbs to the roof of the temple, and through thick ropes they descend inside, suffering a terrible stench. At this time, 
A ritual begins in the temple, and dozens of white-clad sectarians surround the priest, an accomplice of Thulsa Doom. While Valeria watches the ritual, Conan and Subotai go downstairs and find a huge snake guarding a magical gem, the Eye of the Snake. Valeria eliminates one of the girls, and, disguised in her costume, she observes the ritual. A young beauty emerges in the center of the hall and is sent downstairs to be eaten by the snake. But the snake no longer needs the food, noticing that it is about to attack him, Conan plunges his sword into the giant viper. Subotai helps his friend slay the snake, and as the girl falls, her scream erupts from the cellar. Panic ensues in the temple, but the sectarians have no luck catching the thieves, they climb to the roof and, jumping into the pool, leave. The friends go to the tavern to celebrate their victory, and Conan gives the most expensive stone to Valeria, after which the pair retire to their room and spend the night together. Conan uses the stone to make a pendant for his friend, which he hangs around her neck. Conan feels like a winner, and as the company gets rich, they get all the pleasures of life, they eat well, have fun, and drink heavily. This plays a bad joke on the thieves, Conan falls asleep at the table, drunk out of his mind, and when King Osric's men come to the tavern, Valerie fails to wake him. The old king is delighted by the insolence of the strangers. He tells them that for many months Thulsa Doom has kept all the towns in fear, and that Osric's young daughter has also fallen under the influence of the evil wizard and left her home. The old man lavishes the thieves with jewels and asks them to return the princess and deal with Thulsa Doom. Valeria tries to dissuade Conan from the exploits, she believes that Thulsa Doom is too dangerous for the three of them to defeat. Subotai agrees with the girl, but Conan the Barbarian says nothing to her beloved. Waking in the morning, Valeria finds her empty bed and her pendant beside her, the girl realizes that Conan alone went to the sorcerer to defeat him. Alone again, Conan sets out on his journey, to the town of Thulsa Doom. For many days the guy walks, asking wayfarers for the right road. Many ruined cities meet him on the way, and finally the warrior finds the hut of the sorcerer who was once his master. All night the men talk by the fire, reminiscing about the old days, and in the morning Conan leaves his sword and horse, and, getting on his camel, he sets off for the sectarian village, pretending to be a traveler in love. At last the warrior sees a column of snake worshippers, with the locals running after them, and hoping to get lost in the crowd, the lad joins the others. The stranger is spotted by one of the priests, and, understanding his interest, Conan takes the old man to a secluded spot, and after eliminating him, he takes his clothes. Disguised as local sorcerers, Conan and the others head upstairs to the palace of Thulsa Doom himself. At last the princess appears on the steps, followed by the warrior and Doom himself. While Conan and the others pretend to worship the sorcerer, he is attacked by his guards, who recognize the stranger as an infidel. There are too many of them, so Conan fails to get away and the sectarians carry him to the place of execution. The warrior is exposed to harsh trials, and then he is visited by Thulsa Doom himself, who demands that the lad tell him where the Eye of the Serpent has gone. Conan reminds the sorcerer of what he did to his family, but Doom believes that it was a mistake of his youth and he spared no one in his search for the secret of steel, so there is no tragedy in what happened. As punishment, Conan is sent to the Tree of Misery. Looking at the circling vultures, the warrior realizes that his end has come and he will never be able to get out. But with the sunrise comes salvation, Subotai appears on the horizon, having at last come to the aid of his best friend. Subotai is followed by Valeria. The friends drag Conan to the sorcerer's hut and ask him to cure the warrior, but the shaman warns them that the price will be high. For several days the sorcerer performs rituals, painting different patterns on the body of the traveler. The decisive night becomes particularly difficult, but Conan is lucky and comes to his senses thanks to the persistence of his beloved and best friend, who drives away the spirits of death. Conan returns to training, promising himself to return to the Temple of Doom and avenge him. This time the friends gather with the warrior, and the old man tells them how to penetrate the mountain in which Thulsa Doom lives. Subotai asks Conan to save revenge for another time and, in the meantime, kidnap the princess and escape, but it is clear from the guy's face that he does not agree. The shaman blesses the guests and they set off. Set up near the entrance to the cliff, the company puts magic makeup on each other, and sneak inside through the kitchen, where they are just now preparing a decoction from the kidnapped. Once inside the main hall, the wayfarers hide behind a fence and watch the ceremony, in which dozens of sectarians take part. They crawl across the floor, entertaining Thulsa Doom with adult games, while the princess sits at the sorcerer's feet, having the upper hand. Suddenly Doom begins to change his jaw comes forward and his hands disappear under his robe. After a couple of minutes, the sorcerer transforms into a huge snake and goes down. Meanwhile, Valeria and Subotai eliminate the guards, and Conan enters the center of the hall and disperses the crowd, 
trying to get through to the founder himself. Valeria grabs the princess and the company leaves, stopping the chase with a cauldron of brew from the kidnapped. Finally, they destroy the castle, leaving it in ruins. The warriors fail to capture the sorcerer, but they decide to leave in order to return later. Despite the guards in the corridors, the company leaves the cave and, jumping on their horses, heads for Osric's kingdom. Doom has no intention of catching up with the fugitives, taking one of his snakes, he makes an arrow out of it and fires it at the travelers. The arrow hits Valeria, and the girl immediately becomes ill. She realizes that this is her end, and for the last time she asks Conan to hug and kiss her. The girl dies right in her lover's arms, further inciting his desire for revenge. Valeria is buried according to barbarian traditions in an abandoned city. Wearing her friend's talisman around her neck, Conan prepares a trap for the sorcerer, who will come for the abducted princess. At length he and Subotai erect a fence of stakes and set traps. The old shaman joins his friends and gets his armor and swords from somewhere. All the while the princess stands chained to a rock on the hill, playing the role of bait. Finally, Doom's army appears, and the company meets him in full readiness. Conan even recalls praying to Krom, whom he has not prayed to in years. Three warriors fight an entire army, and they manage to defeat all but Thulsa Doom himself, the sorcerer does not come close, watching the battle from the sidelines. Realizing that he is lost, the chief priest decides to eliminate the princess so that she will not fall to his enemies. Seeing the villain's plan, Subotai manages to shield the girl and Doom walks away empty-handed. After defeating one of Doom's mercenaries, Conan finds the hilt of his father's sword, and in this the lad again sees a sign from Krom who helped him. At night, Thulsa Doom holds another ritual, gathering thousands of his followers with torches at the front stairs. Conan also comes to the gathering, and the princess escorts him safely away so that he gets close to the sorcerer from behind. Doom tries to hypnotize Conan by calling him his son, but the guy is immune to the sorcerer's charms and takes his head as a trophy, showing it to the assembly and ordering everyone to disperse. Having freed the people, Conan sits down on the steps. When the princess comes for him, the lad sets fire to the snake's den and leaves to take her home and go on to accomplish new feats. 